Ezekiel chapter 3. He said to me, Son of man, eat what you find, eat this scroll, and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat the scroll. He said to me, Son of man, cause your belly to eat, and fill your bowels with this scroll that I give you. Then I ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. He said to me, Son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. For you are not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many peoples of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words you can't understand. Surely if I sent you to them, they would listen to you. But the house of Israel will not listen to you, for they will not listen to me. For all the house of Israel are obstinate and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made your face hard against their faces, and your forehead hard against their foreheads. I have made your forehead as a diamond, harder than flint. Don't be afraid of them, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they are a rebellious house. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, receive in your heart, and hear with your ears all my words that I speak to you. Go to them of the captivity, to the children of your people, and speak to them. And tell them, this is what the Lord Yahweh says, whether they will hear or whether they will refuse. Then the Spirit lifted me up, and I heard behind me the voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be Yahweh's glory from this place. I heard the noise of the wings of the living creatures as they touched one another, and the noise of the wheels beside them, even the noise of a great rushing. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit, and Yahweh's hand was strong on me. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Aviv, that lived by the river Kabar, and to where they lived, and I sat there overwhelmed among them seven days. At the end of seven days, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman to the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word from my mouth, and warn them from me. When I tell the wicked you will surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that wicked man will die in his iniquity, but I will require his blood at your hand. Yet if you warn the wicked and he doesn't turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he will die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Again, When a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he will die. Because you have not given him warning, he will die in his sin, and his righteous deeds which he has done will not be remembered. But I will require his blood at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous not sin, and he does not sin, he will surely live, because he took warning, and you have delivered his soul." Yahweh's hand was on me, and he said to me, Arise, and go out to the plain, and I will talk with you there. Then I arose and went out to the plain, and behold, Yahweh's glory stood there, like the glory which I saw by the river Kabar, and then I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered into me, and set me on my feet. He spoke with me, and said to me, Go, shut yourself inside your house. But you, son of man, behold, they will put ropes on you, and will bind you with them, and you will not go out among them. I will make your tongue stick to the roof of your mouth, that you will be mute, and you will not be able to correct them, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth, and you shall tell them, This is what the Lord says, He who hears, let him hear, and he who refuses, let him refuse, for they are a rebellious house." So in the last chapter, um, Ezekiel got given this scroll with writing on both sides and got told to eat it. So now this chapter starts with him eating it and we discover that it was sweet to taste. And the Lord said to him that he wanted him to fill his bowels with this scroll that I give you. (laughs) Uh, He... It says, let me read it exactly, cause your belly to eat and fill your bowels with this scroll. So um, the bowels, you know, bowels for us, that's, that's, you know, a necessary part of the body. (laughs) But we think of it as, you know, 
you know, something you don't really want to talk about. You know, it's where the poo is and uh, it's, uh, you know, not nice. You know, why would that be in the Bible kind of thing? But um, in ancient Jewish culture, the bowels was like the heart uh, in the sense that, you know, like when we say, for example, oh, I've just got a heart for something, what we mean is we really care for something. Well, in the ancient Jewish culture, they would say that they had bowels for something, <laughs> you know, equivalent to that. They'd say, oh, I've got you in my bowels. <laughs> that doesn't sound nice at all. But what they meant, to have it in your bowels meant you cared about it. So God's telling Ezekiel to eat this scroll, get his words, fill his be- and to fill his bowels. In other words, take my words into you so that you really care about them. That's actually, there's a lesson in that front. We need to get the Lord's words into our hearts. And um, so, for example, when translators, you know, bi- biblical translators are translating the Bible, they have to decide whether to change the word that's used to fit our meaning or to leave it as it is. So in this particular version, which is Ezekiel, um, it, they've left it as bowels because it's part of the digestive system and, you know, he's eating. But in other places, like, for example, in Jeremiah 4, Jeremiah 4, verse 19, he's describing um, how, how much pain he felt concerning terrible things that were going on. So Jeremiah 4, 19, in Hebrew, he says, Oh, the pain of my bowels. But in the NIV, the translators changed it to, Oh, the pain of my heart. So there's quite a few places in the Old Testament where you would read the word heart in English, but it's actually the word bowels. <laughs> yeah, who knew? Strange, hey? So um, we are, the lesson we learn here is that we are to fill our hearts with the word of God. In other places in the Bible, like Romans chapter 12, it says you are to transform your mind with the renewing of God's word. But, but here we must fill our emotions with God's word. So w- you actually need to do both. You need to have your mind transformed so you think right, but you actually have to get the word of God into you so you feel right as well. You, in other words, your feelings are the correct feelings towards others. And the word of the Lord will do that to you, so you've got to eat it. So he eats the word of God, and it says that it was sweet as honey in his mouth. In Revelation chapter 10, John had a very similar experience where he ate a scroll. It was in a vision, of course. He didn't actually eat a scroll. And it was a double-sided scroll, and when he ate it, it tasted sweet in his mouth. And, um, but it was bitter in his stomach. And so, in other words, the words that he had to prophesy were difficult words, but the process of eating it was sweet. And I think there's something about taking the time to get God's word into you, which is sweet. The words themselves may be difficult. They may be sour in your stomach. In other words, when you think about, you know, have you ever been convicted? You've ever been in church in a sermon and felt conviction? Well, that's a little bit like the sourness of the word because it it challenges you. You know you're not okay and you've got to change. And yet there's something sweet about receiving God's word and and surrendering to it so this whole process of getting God's word into you it's it's sweet You, you feel alive you feel a sense of life you know it's the right thing it feels good even though sometimes the words themselves are difficult which is the case here for Ezekiel so God tells him to, to take these words, go to the house of Israel, but he says they're rebellious, stiff-necked, stubborn-hearted, they won't listen to you, but do it anyway. This is very similar to Jeremiah. So the, the children of Israel that are in Jerusalem, they're rebellious and not listening. Some of them have been taken away to Babylon. Ezekiel's got the job of talking to that lot. Same problem. They're rebellious. They're not listening. Why does God bother, <laughs> you would say? Why bother talking to people if they're not going to listen it's because of the kindness of God's heart. And um, God, God wants people to understand, even if they're not willing to listen. He, he takes the time to explain things to his people, even if they refuse to pay attention to it. You cannot say that God didn't try. 
And you cannot say, even if God knew what was going to happen, he still tries anyway. And so that would have been, no doubt, a very difficult job for Jeremiah. And, um, and then, of course, when they are told, they have no excuse. It's their own responsibility if they're told. And so the Lord says to Ezekiel, you've got to tell these people because if you don't tell them, the responsibility will be on you, not on them. But if you tell them, the responsibility is on them because they refuse to listen. And I know there's been plenty of times, well, there's been a few times anyway in church over the years where this particular scripture from Ezekiel 3 has been used to kind of like guilt trip you into sharing the gospel with your friends. So I remember um, in high school, you know, hearing someone talk about this. It wasn't my parents or my dad, but it was a guest speaker or something and saying, you know, if you don't share the gospel, their blood will be on your head. <laughs> I remember feeling so guilty. He's like, man, I better share the gospel so their blood's not on my head. And you see, that was the wrong motive. I was going, I went to school and I shared the gospel with my friends. But the reason I shared the gospel was so that I wouldn't be blamed if they went to hell. You know, it'd be all their fault, not my fault. And it's the really the wrong motive. Um, these children of Israel, they were rebellious. They were stiff-hearted. They, they, were, they were going to be punished. The Lord knew they were not going to listen. So Ezekiel had to share it with them so that the responsibility was theirs. They weren't going to listen. He already told him. But with your friends and my friends, we don't know if they will or they won't listen. We're not sharing the gospel with them to absolve ourselves of responsibility. That's the wrong reason. We're sharing it with them because we care about them. And we want them to listen. We want them to know the hope that we have. So this passage of Ezekiel, it's, it, you can't use it like that. It's not the same situation at all. We need to look at the people around us and, in fact, don't count Ezekiel 3 as applying to that. Just look at the people around us and realize they matter to God. He gave, Jesus gave his life for them. They matter to us. And so we will love them and pray for them and speak to them because we care. And that is why we get God's word into our bowels, into our hearts. It's so that we will care. That's the idea there. And so we need the help of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Here in verse 24, it says that the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. Ezekiel had the help of the Holy Spirit, and you and I need the help of the Holy Spirit too. Lord, we want to be people that get your word inside of us into our hearts so that it matters. We want to look at others around us in our life and speak to them because we care about them. And I pray that you'd help us with the Holy Spirit to do these very things. Lord, let grace be at work for us. In Jesus' name, amen.